Strings definitely play a part in achieving my unique sound. I like to say the bass acts as another lead instrument, so I want my strings to really bring out the brightness and the grit, and I think the Daddario strings do just that. This is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar. I'm in the Chase Center in San Francisco, California. That's right, folks. We went on a field trip to chase down these wonderful rock stars that are backing up Olivia Rodrigo. And first up, I have Emily, who just shredded that intro. That was awesome, Emily. How are you Thank doing? Thank you. I'm good. How are you? Real good. I, I got to know, how different is this or how similar is this to your previous gigs in Broadway? I know you did Hamilton and Rent, <laughs> but now you're rocking arenas. Like, so what, what's that like? Is it, it dissimilar? Is it similar? What's, what's been your experience? Um, you know, it's a totally different experience. Like, I'm a performer. I love to play live. Yeah. I always have. Um, I was with an artist for three years before this playing kind of like five to... With Reno, ten. right? Yeah, with Reno playing uh, five to ten cap rooms. So that was like also very performance based. But um, the Broadway stuff is, is very different because you're, you're sitting down, you're reading sheet music, you're underneath you're in the, pit. the stage, you're in the pit. Yeah. I love doing that kind of stuff. Um, the way it's similar is in the like, consistency, like just having to like really nail the show every night yeah. and play it mostly the same way. Yeah. Um, it's really good for your playing, doing a show eight times a week. Yeah, I got it. Um, yeah, your chops are up, clearly, just oh, with that playing. You. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a routine, like you're, you're doing it. Like how, how long were the, the Broadway shows, whether, whether it was Hamilton or Rent? Um, I did Hamilton for seven months okay. before I um, jumped off to join with Rina Sawayama, who's a really amazing British like alt pop artist. Um, I did that for seven months and we toured all over the US and Canada and then that tour went on to Asia, but I had um, gone by that point. And then Rent was a month long TV special. So okay. we did like a live TV performance of it, but we were on the Sony lot for a month. Oh, all right. Putting it all together. Yeah. And, Everything. And then, so how did you transition from Rena? I assume it was your last, and then to, to get here? How did that happen? It happened pretty quick. Um, we had ended a touring cycle that was a bit endless because after COVID, uh, we did a makeup tour for the previous record. Yeah. She released a new record, and so we went back on the road. And so we were kind of going for three years straight. Um, and that album cycle ended in October. So when I was leaving to go on the last leg of that tour, I happened to get a phone call from the musical director who um, runs this gig. And so I ended up back in LA a few weeks later. Did and we started- Did audition, I assume? Or no, uh, you just no, got the just, gig. Yeah, got a phone just call. A, and, you're such a badass, that's Well, why. I don't know about <laughs> that, but, but yeah, happy to be here with all these people. And I get to play music with six of my best friends every night. That's so rad. And you're inspiring countless more. people, you know, little kids to, to, to us, to people that we came to chase you guys down to do a rig rundown. Thanks. You guys are, so you guys are taking over the world, backing up Olivia, and it's it's a, a special treat. But let's get into the gear. What's uh, tell me about this Gibson? So this is a uh, Captain Kirk SG. He's the guitar player for the Roots, yeah. and he plays on Fallon. I love his playing, but I just thought the guitar was so cool. It's uh, three pickups. There's a master volume, and then obviously like tone and volume controls for um, each pickup. Um, I use it on a big a big portion of okay. the set. Um, it's I don't know. It's like it's got kind of this like Jack White vibe to it in yeah. a way. And a lot of Olivia's music is really in, influenced by him and by that type of music. So I just thought it really suited like tonally the the music and then also like visually. It's a really <laughs> just a striker, rad guitar. Sure. It's a cool color and where yeah. do you? Where do you live in the three pickup combination? Are you on the bridge mostly or you kind of switch? Between? I'm all over the place. Oh, really? I'm such a nerd. I'm like riding <laughs> all the tone and volume controls and really just trying to like dial in everything and get it right. Because like, especially on, um, on, on these guitars, like you get so much tonal variation out of like the volume controls and then like having the masters so nice. Yeah. I usually have this up because, um, I, I ride the volume pedal constantly. Yeah. So I've got like a volume and an expression set up here. And, and that um, is 
con uh, working with the Kemper here? Yeah, so like for example on Bad Idea, right, which is the first song of the set, uh, there's this very like kind of Jack White-esque solo and I'm using the expression um, to get to get that kind of like whammy sound. Okay. But what's kind of cool is that we have everything MIDI mapped for in over in playback. So when I do the solo, I'm actually out front on the stage with Olivia jumping around. Yeah. But we MIDI mapped the expression pedal into the box, so it'll do all of the whammy changes. Yeah. So it kind of sounds like. Yeah, I, I definitely get Jack White and Tom Morello. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm hearing as that thing pierces my ear. That's <laughs> that's shrill. It's cool. It cuts, it cuts, it cuts through, through the mix in a nice way. Yeah, yeah. certainly does. Now, uh, can you show off maybe a couple other uh, sound patches that you use with, with this Gibson? Yeah, absolutely. So one of my favorite patches in the show is um, from the song Traitor. It's, uh, it starts off just like very textural with a lot of swells like And then it just goes into this like massive sound. Sherbert at the start, something nice and sweet, and then like Rocky Road, baby. It's like yeah, that thing. That's a ripping tone. Yeah, and we've got there's a big like playoff at the end. So once she and the dancers leave the stage, it's like a big guitar solo. So I get to have fun with that one. It's so. an Emily moment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I really like that sound. Um, let's see what else we use this guitar for. As you scan through here and get us to a next patch, is this similar setup to what you would have used with the Broadway stuff? I assume that they weren't big on amps and pedal boards. Yeah, that so was direct. direct. I'm a big amps person. Like I record a lot at home okay. and I'm a, an amp nerd. And, yeah. But um, I really am impressed by the Kempers and how good modeling has gotten in general. And I've, I've played all of them. I've played the Neural stuff. I've played the Axe Effects yeah. and the Helix and stuff. And I really do, I, I love this, the sounds I'm getting out of the Kempers. So I've been pretty consistent with them on anything um, where I'm going direct. Speaking of amps, it looks like you got a Fender Twin reverb here. Yeah, I've got the reverb kind of as a clean um, platform, okay. and then I've stacked a bunch of pedals on to make this sound. Um, actually, so I'm going to show you a different sound. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, so this is a very like Jack White inspired song yeah. as well. This is Obsessed. Um, And then this part uh, in the pre-chorus is very like Alanis. All right, moving on, we got an acoustic sonic from Fender. Tell me about it. Yeah, so I love the offset shape. Um, there's some moments in the show that are really quick transitions between more acoustic parts and electric parts. Uh -huh. And so we had to come up with a way to cover those during the show kind of seamlessly without yeah. having an acoustic and like putting a bunch of fuzz on it, which I've done before and I love, but in big rooms like this where there is so much potential for feedback and yeah. crowd noise, um, this was a way better option. So it's chaos waiting to happen. Yeah, it is. So uh, this is all American Bitch, which is one of Olivia's uh, biggest songs. Yeah. So the acoustic part is like. And then it switches seamlessly to the electric.
So well, it's, it's really quick transitions between them. I won't get confused with that being like a D45, you know, like a 1942 D45 Martin, but that's a pretty convincing plugged in acoustic sound. It is, and especially in the mix. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And so that just gets used for All-American Bitch? Yeah, I also use it during uh, Brutal and a few others. But the cool thing about the Kempers and the modeling and using a guitar like this is that for the acoustic sound, I've got IRs. Okay. So I really am capturing like the feel and room sound of an acoustic. But then when I switch to this electric patch, it's like a big AC30 kind of drive. Yeah. And um, I've got like cab turned on for that. So I can go from kind of a direct sound with IRs to a you know mic'd up cab wow yeah that's 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 one of the joys of having this type of setup you know there's drawbacks with missing the amps and cabs on stage but this is this is would be where this is excels at this is what something that does well totally so what should we move on to here next we got a couple um, other guitars up here yeah if you i mean if you want i could show you one more on this or if you want the rubber bridge or oh, it's kind of up to you guys let's do the rubber bridge cool because that's kind of been in vogue lately yeah definitely. there's a lot of people rocking those now so this is a rubber bridge baritone made by Ruben at Old Style in LA. Really? Um, and these these started popping up a lot two or three years ago, um, kind of everywhere in indie music. Um, and country. Got like, yeah, and we country. We literally just did a, a rig rundown that will come out at some point in the future with Rob McAnally, who's a he's a studio dude in Nashville, and he's like, I gotta have I I don't like the instrument, but I have to have one for recording because people have been requesting it so much. Mm -hmm. So it's popping up all over the place. These rubber bridge guitars. What have you dug about it? Uh, I I honestly just love the the textural sound that you get with it. Um, for this tour, I'm using it because it's on the record, but I love it. I have one in standard at home as well. Um, Blake Mills kind of yeah. was using it at first and then like I've heard, heard it on Phoebe Bridges records, yep. Taylor Swift records, so it's kind of like the sound of indie, but I love recording with it because um, you can take like just the mic'd up sound of the, it's almost harp like and very textural yeah, if you can weird. mic up like the fretboard and finger noise, but then you also have like two pickup options. Um, I'm using it on The Grudge and Lacey. Okay. And the Grudge is like such a beautiful song. It's one of my favorites in the set. that sound mm -hmm. it's kind of like it has like flats on it like a old yeah flat it base. does so actually because it's a baritone I've got a seven string set from Ernie Ball and I'm not using the low seven and so that's what I'm using okay. for the wow it and it strikes me it's a baritone but it doesn't look like a an extended like scale length yeah it plays great I mean it's it's a it's not a vintage guitar it's no. like a newer recording king which are not expensive guitars but it sounds great it's like an absolute you know vibe vibe guitar but the, yeah the rubber bridge is really cool and it's working really well in arenas too i think one thing that my tech mao and i were talking about at first was how to like eliminate room noise and everything yeah. because one of the pickups that's more like microphonic piezo was was tough with everything but um it's it's really been isolated and nice and it sounds great in the room yeah well so you mentioned it on the grudge what's the other song it gets used on uh i use it on lacy as well okay so find it here so um, on the record this is the main guitar used for lazy but for a different kind of live instrumentation um, we decided to have Daisy on acoustic playing it on steel and okay. then I come in more as a, a textural okay. thing um,
the cool thing about these guitars is that um, to get the, really the best sound of, out of them, you have to play them really light. Yeah. I'm a, I tend to be an aggressive player, especially with my right hand. <laughs> um, but with with the rubber bridge, you really have to like slow down and really play it with light touch, or else it sounds just like kind of floppy. Yeah. Like. Yeah. But if you play it really light, especially recorded, you get such a nice sound. It takes the charm out of it. You get that like classic indie, you know, yeah. harp. It's no diss to the guitar. It sound it's it's, but it's I rem, I would call it like a lullaby guitar. Mm -hmm. like it would, it's so soft and bubbly. It's 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 a wonderful sound. Totally and understand why it's kind of taken over the airwaves. There is one last instrument up here, the Ernie Ball Music Man. Should we talk about the Valentine? Sure. And are you as well an Ernie Ball string? Uh, in Dorsey. Mm -hmm. I love the paradigms. They're amazing. I don't think I've broken any strings in this tour, okay. which is like really crazy for me. So I love how well they hold up. I love the sound of them. I love the feel. Are you tens? Um, I'm using. I'm all over the place. Okay. I've got tens on most guitars, but I've got like some eleven skinny top heavy bottom on a uh, telly that's downstairs that's tuned to okay. in D standard. I've got a twelve string down there. Um, I also have elevens on a gold top. Oh, nice. Because I play slide for that one. Oh, right. And uh, I like thicker strings for slide. Um, so we're, we're kind of all over the place with our string gauges and and um, sets and everything. But this is the only guitar with flats. Gotcha. Well, tell me about the Valentine here and how you're using the set list. Yeah. So I'm using the Valentine on Jealousy because it's such a great rock guitar. It cuts so nicely. Um, Tim at Ernie Ball has been so lovely to me. I love like the roasted maple necks that yeah. Ernie Ball makes. They're just like so nice to play. They feel perfect. Yeah. The shape's awesome. And I also love this green that he made for me. Yeah. Um, it's like my favorite color. So it always makes me happy to play it. But this is uh, this is from Jealousy Jealousy. There's some cool stuff going on with the expression as well. Um, that happens later on in the song. I don't know out of everyone on stage who has the most fun, just because you guys are all making <laughs> rad noises. So I could, I've seen performances and obviously online and you guys are all having such a blast on stage, but it's, I can see why. Obviously you're wonderful people, but you got some really inspiring tones and oh, you know, noise you. makers. It's uh, programming the show is so much fun because it's just like very creative and, you know, deciding how we're going to solve the problems of replicating studio parts yeah. for live and making it like fresh and exciting while still, you know, ringing true to the record yeah. um, and serving the music as best as possible is, is like the most important thing. But um, it's also really great that we do have everything MIDI mapped and programmed so we can just worry about playing and having fun and not worrying about 200 something <laughs> yeah, patch right. changes throughout like an hour and a half show. Yeah, yeah, I can understand how that would become a headache. <laughs> well, uh, I know that you want to show off some of your other guitars. Let's go downstairs and uh, check them out. Okay, let's do it. All right, as promised, we've moved below stage into the bunker area. Uh, talk to me about more guitars, Emily. Yeah, so we've got um, about nine guitars that we're using in the set. Okay. There's like such a wide variation of parts and um, tunings and everything else that I just wanted to make sure to cover everything. So, so bringing the most instruments out of everyone on stage. Uh, yes. Yeah, you <laughs> carry that honor, uh, that title. So, or the shame from our production manager, maybe. <laughs> Probably both. <laughs> Probably a little bit of both. But so, yeah, I showed you guys the uh, Acoustasonic upstairs yep. and the three pickup SG. I've got this Les Paul. It's a um, Les Paul Classic from 2008. Oh, nice. And Les Pauls get a bad rap. They kind of get branded as dad guitars, but I'm reclaiming it. Uh, I'm not a mom, but <laughs> so, I, so I can't say mom guitar, but I just think they're badass. And um, they sound so good for for just like all the rock stuff in yeah. the show. I use it for the first two songs, Bad Idea Right, and Ballad of a Homeschooled Girl, and um, and then a bunch more in the middle of the set and then towards the end. But uh, I just love the way these play and I've just had this forever. Yeah, I was gonna um, say, being a 2008, have you had it for a couple of years, mm -hmm. a while? Yeah. 
Have you? I'm sure you used it in the TV gig and uh, also Broadway. Yeah, yeah, I've used it on like a bunch of sessions. I used it on um, some of the theater stuff, and then I've used it live a lot. So this kind of ends up on most gigs that I do. Nice. What's what's next in the boat? I see we have another less Paul. Yeah, more so, Pauls. <laughs> exactly. More is less, right? <laughs> yeah. So we've got a uh, gold top here. And I wanted a gold top because I'm playing slide for a couple songs oh, in the nice. set. Um, get in back being like the foremost one. So I've got this strong with 11s and um, it's set up like a little bit higher than the others so I can kind of, you know, get the Deal, slide yeah. sounding good. Um, yeah. It's got P90s. Yeah, it's got P90s. It's the only guitar with P90s in the set. So it's I love growler. P90s. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Cool. Let's move on. But my favorite slogan when it comes to Les Paul is Les Paul's more beer <laughs> from our friends at Riggs of Dad. I haven't heard that one. I oh, like yeah. that. <laughs> There's literally an uh, Instagram ch channel or page or whatever profile called Riggs of Dad. There's a lot of Les Paul's on there. And one of his slogans, he has a t-shirt, is like Les Paul more beer. <laughs> nice. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> Ross does a great job. So moving on to another Gibson. Yes. Yeah, so this is a beautiful hummingbird. I just love the way that hummingbirds sound. Mm. for the finger pick yeah. stuff. It's like a bell. Beautiful. Yeah, and same for like chords. So it just, I, I love a, a bigger body. I know Days likes to use the smaller parlors, but I like, um, it's a nice contrast between us two, yeah. especially if there are moments when we're both playing acoustics, they sound totally different. But I use it on enough for you. Um, there's an LR Bags anthem in here. And yeah, I just think it's like a really um, balanced sounding guitar and it sounds great in the house. Awesome. So let's keep cruising. Um, this is one of my favorite guitars. This is a Taylor 12. It's a 600 series. Um, Lindsay at Taylor has been so awesome and so supportive of me like throughout my entire, entire musical career. Uh -huh. So, um, she really worked with me to find like the right 12 string. I went and played a bunch and this just sounded so good. It cuts the mix so nicely. It's used on logical. Um, I've got it tuned in drop D Okay. and we also have it strung in reverse. So it's high, low, high, low, high, low. Oh, um, what made that decision? Just the sonics of it and yeah. the way that, that you play I it. like the, that the, you know, when you pick I use like pretty much all downstrokes for that. And so I look, I just like the sound of like hitting the high string first, even if I like a melody. Miss, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Right on. Have, has this been an adjustment or have you played 12 strings in the past before joining this gig? I've played 12 strings. I've got another like guild kind of jumbo 12 string. Um, but for live, like I just think Taylor's cut so nicely through a mix. They've got a really like punchy mid thing going on. Yeah. Um, can I like play it for a second? Yeah, cool? absolutely. So yeah, so we've got it in uh, drop D and reverse strung, so. It's such a beautiful instrument, the 12 string. You know, it's it has that coarse sound. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. It's like phasey without sounding yeah. too wonky, but yeah. it just, um, yeah, it's hard to get a 12 string to sit like really nicely and cut in a, a huge room like this. Yeah. But I really do think that like the tailors have this special mid thing that, that gets, gets through. Now, do you ever think that you could, you know, maybe a future tour? You could have like a, uh, I think it's the EDS 1275 Gibson double neck, like Jimmy Page used to rock <laughs> on stage, 12 string, six string. Do you think you could, you could find yourself getting there? Absolutely. Listen, if we, if we could just get a second vault, then we can, uh, we'll fill it with double necks. Yeah. All right. Well, let's cruise on. I, th cool. I think I see a telly. Yeah. So this telly is, a. um, it's actually, it's a Chicago music exchange, Chicago special. Okay. It's, um, based off of like a. 50 shape with the neck so it's a thick neck i swapped out the pickups for lawlers okay um and this is in d standard i use it on pretty isn't pretty and deja vu in the set all right um but yeah it's the only guitar on the set that's in d standard and it's just got this like fat chunky 
telly sound that I just really like. Yeah, and the, the lollers probably really help its uh, bark too, I bet. Mm -hmm. And like, we're using mostly hum humbucker guitars for the set because it's so rock. Yeah. But then there are a few moments that are like, you know, more clean chorus or like even some of the shoegazy stuff sounds mm -hmm. really nice with the singles. Right on. Uh, we've got what, one more or two more guitars in here that we want to talk about? Yeah, I've got the rubber bridge. Oh yeah, so we I talked about. you guys upstairs. Well, I thank you so much, Emily. Uh, you've thank definitely you. carrying the load with the guitars, you know, <laughs> flying the guitar flag well with Olivia, having the most instruments on stage. But uh, we got to carve out some time for the rest of the Daisy and Mo. <laughs> so we're gonna talk to them. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for your time. Strings have a lot to do with your tone. The NYXLs for me have always totally been great. I really need that friction to feel my slides. I depend on that friction even for accuracy. All right, I'm joined by Daisy. Daisy, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you guys? This is great. Uh, you know, a formal welcome to the neighborhood. We found out that you're moving to Nashville, so oh, yeah. join the fun down there in yeah. 615. <laughs> You'll be making music and making, you know, because it's, it's Music City, baby. I know. I'm a born and raised New Yorker. I want to try something different, so I'm really excited for Nashville. Awesome. Well, we welcome you with open arms as Thanks. only Nashvillians can. Awesome. Thank you. But uh, let's get into gear. This is a fun story. Let's a little birthday into... present. Oh, yeah. Uh, big, big 30th birthday just happened in November, and I wasn't intending on buying anything and I went to Angel City Guitars in LA and just was messing around with my buddy on guitar and I picked this up and I said can you hold this for me for a week and he did and then I was like I, I want to buy that guitar yeah. yeah and I went back and I made it happen and I'm very grateful I was able to do that so it's a Shabbat before walking into Angel City had you known about the company I at all? had known about Shabbat but it wasn't something that was on my radar that I was gonna be able to make happen for me yeah. and luckily I just was like I played it and it was so worth it that I just I made it happen and now, I'm very happy I did. Have you played Jazz Masters prior to this or is this kind of your first foray? Into I a have, I have, but nothing that has felt like this, to be honest. Like this is just, I can't even describe it. It's like butter, yeah. it's amazing. Now, what is what have you enjoyed playing it in terms of the context of the band that you're touring with, Olivia? This is definitely this is my main player for sure. Okay. Uh, just because like it does the rock tones great, it does the clean tones great. It literally is so versatile that I I really this is on the majority of the set okay. for me, which is awesome. Can we can we hear some of the sounds that you're making with it hell yeah dude i mean the, we got <laughs> we got some big fuzz stuff going that's what i've queued up right now like <laughs> it's sick yeah like <laughs> it's what awesome. a fun thing to, it, it's you know it's olivia's such a young and upcoming obviously she's done stuff with disney but second records out but it, it's it's great that sh it's a rock band on stage oh it's a total it rock show and i know the record is rock pop however whatever johnny's want to split it into but the live show is a rock show it is a total rock and i mean show. that's why we're here yeah I mean, you guys are guitar stars yeah and bass too <laughs> but, you. but you know what i mean like you're not just up here strumming we have an acoustic at j45 but it, you're, you guys are a rock band yeah yeah no we were really really rocking <laughs> out here and like we we have some really cool influences like i know especially that sound right there like that <laughs> wall of sound situation yeah. like we take so much inspo from like my bloody valentine was a big inspo okay. for a lot of the tones i made where it's just like we want to just push a wall of sound yeah and that's what we went for. Is that kind of your role? Describe your role in the band. So I primarily do rhythm okay. and like, I would like to say texture and stuff and just like Wall absolute sound. meat and potatoes yeah. and just like really kind of have the underbelly along with Moa. Like me and Moa tend to play a lot of very similar stuff and we riff off of each other. And then like Emily is just shredding on top, <laughs> you know? So it's really fun. That's awesome. And it really works. Now, uh, I'm sure uh, your other elements that you've played before, two bamps I'm sure were a role, but you're using Kemper obviously for the production of this this arena show. Yeah. Has that been a, a learning curve or have you kind of just jumped in and enjoyed well, the... Well, I'll tell you um, a fun story. Oh, I will be very honest okay. here, uh, maybe to a fault, but we'll find out. 
Um, yeah, I've only used amps my whole life and pedals and uh, I try to keep like my pedal rig really simple. And then I got the call for this gig and they were like, do you use a Kemper? And I said, yeah, for sure. I had never touched a Kemper <laughs> in my life. And I just went, I'm going to figure it out. Yeah. And I went over to a friend's house. He had a Kemper and I was like, can I start messing with this to understand it? And luckily it did really click pretty quickly. Uh -huh. I mean, it's very intuitive, the software and everything. It's, it's not uh, like rocket science or anything. So I really just went in and started messing around and now I have become absolutely addicted to really? just like tweaking you know profiles that already already exist uh -huh. and yeah like you can make some wild sounds as with a, this as thing. we've heard already yeah can you take us through some more of your sounds because this you know we'll get to the other instruments quickly yeah but, uh, I, I want to cover kind of the Kemper settings you have because this is your main main road dog so oh like, yeah let, main let's road dog your sounds right now well here's even a good one see what else we got here we got uh some fun like on get em back we do because a lot of the stuff that normally like on the record might be a synth or mm -hmm. just like an absolute digital situation we've translated it to guitar for a lot of stuff so this phasey sound is a synth on get em back okay. but we just decided to rockify it and make yeah. it into like <laughs> It's really fun. Yeah. So you get to like really mess around beyond just like your classic tone and whatnot. You can really go go crazy with all of it. What else do we have here? Obsessed has some fun fuzz sounds. Brutal's just straight up rock and roll. <laughs> Very fun. And then we have, we like get pretty experimental on the garage. I love reverb, I love delay. Yeah, I the like, dreamy stuff. I like beautiful. the dreamy wall, like soundscape stuff, so. That's that's what I tend to do. Awesome. Yeah. You're yeah, the color you're the color guitarist in I, terms of like yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm I'm honored to be given that title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, should we move on to another instrument? Yeah. Cool. What do you want to talk about next? This one's pretty cool. We got a it's a pretty fun story with with this guy. So this is a uh, you got to have the rainbow strat. Yeah, of uh, you know, the strap. Ernie Ball. Ernie Ball. Oh yeah. Ernie Ball's the best. Uh, this was given to me by my partner's dad, who has a bunch of stuff in his basement. And this is like one of those stories that I know everybody wants to happen to them. Uh, and it luckily did happen to me. <laughs> uh, he just had it in a case and he was like, I don't play it, do you want it? And I was like, no, no, I can't take, like I, there's no way I can actually take that from you. Yeah. And then he was like, I'm telling the truth. Like, I, I won't play this ever again. Yeah. And I said, OK, yeah, I'll take it. And someone had kind of done their own um, their own paint job on it and everything. But it turns out it's a 1972 Strat. Nice. And uh, yeah, so I got wow. it refinished and wanted it to kind of look relic and old, like the year it was from and everything except for the tuning pegs, just because we need something that was a little more reliable than the stuff that was, uh, I think that when we first fixed this up, which our techs, Mal and Luis, they fixed this up really nice for me. Uh, the tuning pegs were like smaller than the holes that were drilled really? in. So it just wasn't staying in tune. So now we've got this thing like road ready and it rips. I mean, it's just really fun. I don't use it on too much stuff. I see it as a moniker up here for drop D. Yeah. Okay. So, so I got some, D. Got some drop to you. Hang on. Pause while I tune and just make, <laughs> make sure we uh Now was it white from it the was, original okay. It was white. The we, smoky white now. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, I want it to look just absolutely 
like it came from 1972. I wanted to to represent like, you know, the the antiqueness and like the checking is all everything is so cool to what a me. Cool present. Yeah. Yeah, what a nice little <laughs> <laughs> It never has happened like that before. And oh my god, I was so lucky when he was like, "You genuinely can take this. I promise." Yeah. It almost sounds like you were doing him a favor, like getting it off his hands. Yeah, right? <laughs> Very fun. Now, what are some of the Drop D songs on the set that you... Pretty Isn't Pretty is Drop D. Okay. Um, I think that's the only one. And then we just go right into Love is Embarrassing after that. So I keep this on and just keep it in Drop D. And it, I mean, it just rips. Drop yeah. D is dope. You know, yeah. we love Drop D. Yeah. Well, cool. Should we move on to the Ernie Ball here? Yeah. Music man? Give this some love. Oh, we need to give this some love. Now as you're switching, and I know you got to turn on your pack here. What uh, oh, strings thank are you, you use, using? I'm probably Ernie Ball. We yes. Oh yes, we're <laughs> using Ernie Ball. Uh, I use the Paradigm Tens, and they don't break. And I mean, I am like beating the crap out of these guitars yeah. and I have not had any breakage so far. And I mean, even if I did, it would be pretty rock and roll. But yeah. I am relentless on this thing and it just <laughs> never ever breaks, dude. Thank you so much, Luis. Yeah, this thing is awesome. When I first got hooked up with Olivia uh, for the Sour Tour in 2022, they were kind enough, uh, Music Man, Ernie Ball, they were kind enough to say, hey, we want to like, you know, spec something out for you. And this is what I chose. I mean, I didn't spec it out too hard just because I loved how these guitars were yeah. as is. So I just kind of was like, I just want it in pink and yeah. <laughs> that'll be cool enough for me. But I mean, the neck on this thing is like, that thing is gorgeous. Yeah. Like they just truly take their time and their craftsmanship is incredible. And they have been so kind to us on this tour and the last tour and every tour. They're so kind to every artist that they work with. They're amazing. Now you had mentioned prior when you earlier that you got the phone call and you had to kind of fake your way through <laughs> Kemper. How, how did you get your name involved in, in possibly being up for this? Game? Oh man, uh, it was, I've, I've been touring since I was like 17 years old. I was in a band straight out of high school. We got signed. We went out and did the thing, and one of the ties was that in that first band, I opened for DNC, and I met Brian Pump, who is our sound guy on this tour. Okay. He was doing sound for DNC, and we became buddies and whatnot, and that was really nice. Anyways, life continues, and I, I joined Pom Pom Squad on bass, and we were opening up for Not, Not A Surf. Yeah. And I became friends with the bassist, Ed, who is not the actual original bass player of Not A Surf. He was filling in for some reason. So it turns out that uh, Ed knows our music director, Stacy. And then I had a couple of people kind of vouching for me. And then I got this job and it was incredible. I mean, yeah. it really did open the door for me in ways that I couldn't have ever imagined. So Some old fashioned networking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was awesome. Joy. You mentioned yeah. we, you were just in Nashville doing something with Remy. Yeah. So like, oh, yeah, yeah. Your, your first call for a lot of people, it sounds like. <laughs> I, I mean, I, it's funny. I just like make friends with people because I genuinely I love their personalities. You seem, you know, like a horrible person. <laughs> I'm terrible, a terrible person. <laughs> no, they, I really just like love getting to know people. And then it just kind of naturally comes up. And I'm really grateful that this is like the turn my career has made. I mean, I totally did not see this on my bingo card for 2024. So this is amazing. Well, congrats to you. Thanks. And uh, it seems it's well-deserved. Thanks, appreciate now, it. Now, uh, getting back to the uh, gear talk, is this a backup or is it get is it slotted anywhere in the set? Oh no, this is slotted. This is uh, definitely in the encore section. I mean, it's in more parts than just that, but like, you know, when you need just straight up rock and roll, this, this guitar yeah, is gonna do so. it. Oh yeah, I mean, it's really, really fun. It's 
It's a yeah. rocker for sure. Oh, it is a rocker. I'm like, what is our set? I don't even. <laughs> <laughs> For all the great kids keeping track outs, uh, at home, do you happen to know any of the amps that you're using throughout your Yeah. Um, just so people I, still ask. I do know the amps because I really just use Embrit. I okay. mean, Embrit has like the classic guitar tones. And then from there, I just like will mess with it beyond belief until it's whatever it needs to be. But most of them in their natural state are just like epic and incredible. Well, right on. Yeah. Well, we have one last instrument to talk about. Let's give this Gibson some love. So I have a very uh, intimate moment with, uh, thank you, Luis. Boom. I have a very intimate moment in the set with uh, Olivia for Happier and Favorite Crime, where it's just me and her and we're on the catwalk and we sit down together and we play a All couple right. of tunes and it's really a magical moment. I mean, in the beginning, uh, a lot of those songs were going to be kind of full band situations and then they turned into really really sweet intimate moments here we will not blast the ears off boom <laughs> Like most of the acoustics, at least what I play and what Olivia plays, we have these L double O's from Gibson and Gibson has also been insanely kind to us and just kind of letting us borrow these until there's no end in sight, <laughs> yeah. you know, <laughs> like forever borrow. Yeah, forever borrow. And uh, they've been really incredible to us. So I genuinely love the parlor guitars. I'm not the biggest fan of like the big full body yeah. guitars. I just like. I like something tiny that looks really casual, and this fits all my needs for that. Which so is we really will never nice. see you up here with a super jumbo, like. Not normally, unless it's like you know requested. Yeah. I I just think that for me it looks a little silly, yeah. and I Even genuinely, for me, it's I mean, a big concrete. It's I know, Tower. right? I'm like, I just love how these look. They're they're adorable and tiny, and they yeah. have like a giant sound. So it's I love them. It's a perfect couch guitar. Yeah, yeah, or, exactly. You know, on stage with Olivia Rodriguez. Or, you know, you, but exactly, you get the vibe, exactly. Well, Daisy, <laughs> uh, thank you so much and congrats on everything again. And thank uh, we're you. gonna talk the rest of the band. Thank you so much, dude, I appreciate <laughs> it. All right, I'm now joined by Mo, the bass player. Mo, how are you doing? Great, how are you? Really good. Uh, this is fun because not only are you guys playing in San Francisco, we're on a field trip from our homes in Nashville to come check out your guys' rigs. Well, welcome to uh, our side of the the country. Yeah, right. And I have to put you on blast, but you just said it, it's easier to play for 20,000 people than it is to do something like this. Oh, 100%. I get so nervous and like self-conscious when yeah. I know that people are watching me. You're a you rock know? star. I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> but 20,000 people, it's like, it's too many to grasp. Yeah, you know? I understand that. And then, you know, this is going out to millions of people on the internet. So try to wrangle with that self-consciously. Yeah. yeah. Hi, millions of people. <laughs> well, let's dig into to your gear. What What yeah. is this special bass? So this is like the first like real bass I ever bought. Really? I was 16. I worked as a mailman for a summer to make this happen. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, the first gig it ever did was at Sweden Rock Festival. I'm Swedish. Wow. And um, yeah, like. It's a great first bass purchase. First real bass like purchase. Like first real, yeah. yeah. My first was a Squire, you okay. know, but. Of course. Um, but yeah, like this was, this is the dream bass. Like I was all of, like, I grew up on rock and metal and like, you know, seeing Lemmy, he had, had a yeah. big back here. So I was like, okay, that, that's, that's what I want. It, can you tell us more about it? Like what year it is? It's an 81. So she's an oldie. Yeah. I bought it at Helge Svola in Vekra in Sweden. And I remember the, my band at the time, the singer, classic singer said, did you buy a broken bass? <laughs> <laughs> classic singer, am I right? But um, yeah, so this was in the case for a long time, actually. And then for this tour, we decided we wanted to bring in something fun. Yeah. And I was talking to Luis, my uh, guitar, guitar tech. tech slash husband. And he was like, well, what about the Rickenbacker? And I had honestly forgotten that I had it. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, you know, how 
how come I didn't think about this earlier? Did you take this out? You know, you're an MI grad, and you're also a tour. Uh, you did warp tour with Bay Ledges. Now, was that something you used with? I the- did not do warp tour with Bay Ledges. I'm sorry. But- <laughs> who did you Who did you do warp tour with? Uh, I did tour with Bay Ledges. Yes, okay. but it was a U.S. tour. Gotcha. I've done warp tour with other bands. Okay. Well, yeah. well, uh, in those situations, did, did the Rick come out, or is that something you left at home? In Sweden? Uh, I did uh, use the Rick in rehearsals for okay. Bay Ledges, uh, but they wanted a P bass. Okay. And, um, I mean, the P bass is my other, you know, yeah. true love. So now that you brought it out of the case and it's been on on tour, tour in the world, you know, backing up Olivia. What what's what have you enjoyed about playing this Rick again? I love how just subby it is. It's just low, like it's a rock bass, and that's it. And I love that I can't play fucking jazz on this. Yeah, like well, I well, love let's hear that. this rock bass. All right. Rock. Now, obviously, playing out of context without the band and your bandmates is always a, a jarring thing. Yeah. Just playing bass solos constantly, but it sounds it sounds great. I love how low it is. You know, like I remember at, there was one time when I was maybe like twenty that I thought I wanted to be a guitar tech. Yeah. Let's just say I'm glad I put that behind. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember there was a guy Friedrich at the local music store who like helped me out and like modded things, and we took out like a resistor okay. to make it even lower. Oh wow! So it's just like boomy. Yeah. Like, but I love that. Now, what, what songs will you use this on, you know, co- covering Sour and Guts? For this one, um, I use it for Bad Idea, right? And Ballad okay. of a Homeschool Girl. So the nice. first two songs of the set, where it's just like balls out, you know? Like yeah, rock and party roll. time. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's move on to the P-Bass. All right, if you say so. Yeah, and we've, uh, I know you, we, assuming people have seen the videos, is uh, you've done some stuff with the new Fender uh, Player 2 series. I have, yeah. Yeah, and now and those were P's. Uh, what is this now is this a uh this is a p as well it's an, an american pro 2 nice. that i got for uh guts okay. so i got this one about a year ago and i feel like i've worn it in pretty well you know like banged it up a bit now will you say that you use this the majority of the night or like out of the three bases yes you have i do okay. i think for olivia like what i like about the p bass is that it's just so versatile and yeah. i feel like it works well for like some of the ballads but also for the rock stuff yeah and, like it's just like sits well in the mix like in a band setting, I think. Yeah. So, can we hear? Can we hear like maybe some applications that you use it on throughout the set? Yeah, I mean. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard that bass yeah, line. Yeah, I mean it's know? all over the radio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's, like, it's kind of hard to escape. Your music's taking over the world, and you guys are supporting that. Yeah. How's that been? You know, being able to to you're playing out arenas every night, selling out. It. What's that feel like? I mean, it is crazy because, like Olivia usually said, or like I've heard her say once that driver's license changed her life. Yeah. And I feel like it kind of changed my life too. Like, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's weird because everything becomes normal. And like the first time you play an arena of this size, you're like, holy fuck. Yeah. And then now we're in, you know, what show, I don't know, 70, 80. I'm like, oh, it looks small today. You guys you play know? like four or four or five nights at Madison Square Garden. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You're playing- I, we did that for sites. my birthday, so that was, wow. I don't know if uh, 33 will be hard to top, I think. Yeah, right? For sure, yeah. But uh, what strings are you using on your bases? Got to give the string company. Funny love. you should ask. Okay. Ernie Ball, much love, Rob. Uh, hybrid Slinkies, 45 to 105. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And then that's all the bases you're using? No, I have uh, round ones on, um, oh, sorry, sorry, flat ones on the guild as okay. well for like more of the like the ballad, like plonky sounding stuff. Okay. Can, can we hear some plunk? Well, <laughs> you, you, if you insist. Yeah. <laughs> so I call this my vampire base. I don't know why, but it's because cause, um, we used it for a vampire for a bunch of like semi-acoustic uh-huh. stuff in the beginning of this run. And this just became the base for that. I love that name. So, um, yeah. I mean, I can do that for three minutes if you want to hear the whole song. Or I can <laughs> no, give you a, a taste. <laughs> that's that's just got to be a fun bass line to play. That's my favorite, honestly. Like, really? obviously, yeah. It's I just think it's so fun. It's so simple, but it's so like I love the like slinky like sounding. Yeah. Like just back and forth. Like, I mean, I've it's I'm, hypnotic the way it flows. Yeah, and I think that like I've never been like a technical player per se, but I love riffs. Like that's like my thing. Yeah. Like, 
I love like a good riff and I think that that has, has a good groove, like a good pocket, like it's cool. I yeah, like. it brings a smile to your face every time it, it comes does. out. It does, and it's funny because, uh, fun fact, we weren't even supposed to play this one on this tour and um, it got added last minute and I was so happy. Yeah, yeah. was it a suggestion from you or are you just lucky that it got I can't put back remember, on? I definitely like, told her, hey, uh, what about jealousy? <laughs> but um, I don't think I have that kind of pull. But yeah. Got lucky. Well, what should we know else about your rig? I, I, as we'll see here on stage, uh, you're the only one with an actual amp on stage. That's right. So you have a Mesa boogie behind you. Yeah. But that's, is that actually getting out to front of house for people? No. This is just for you. This is just for me. Um, we, I tried to do without a, an amp for a few shows, but I just like feeling like yeah. the bass behind me. Um, so yeah, this is sim literally just for me. Selfish. Yeah. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Selfish bass players. I know, right? Always taking the spotlight. Yeah. And then you have the helix in the floor, and I that's kind of all the all the colors, and that's what's like getting pumped into this the arena. Yes, okay. exactly, exactly. Now, how many different patches do you have? Do you have like a lot going on, or is it kind of just no, a few I mean, core sounds? I'm I'm a simple gal, but I have a few that I guess are like a little bit more. Like I have one that kind of sounds like a synth bass. If I can find it. I'm gonna have to switch bass though, because this one is gonna feedback for that. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, because that, that Guild Starfire is uh, completely hollow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, I mean, initially, it sounds really good with that one, mm -hmm. but once you get the feedback, it's, it's you over. Know. Yeah. But so I used this for a song called Logical. And then I have. Um, I just call it meat. I wouldn't know what meat sounds like, but that's now you pretty know. Close. Now yeah. you know. And it's funny because it's a vegan who helped me program it. Really? Yeah. The <laughs> irony is thick. His name is Johnny Gomez. He has a company called Cute Rigs, and he's the, the shit. Wow, that's that's some thick irony. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Moa, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to show us your gear. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you for making this happen. This has been kind of in the works for months. I know. I'm. Thank you for being with us here. Oh, it's been our pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everyone out there, stay safe. Keep rocking. And uh, check right. out these badass girls. <laughs> That's my signature. <laughs> I've been using the NYXL strings for, I think, about 10 years. I couldn't break them. I couldn't throw them out of tune. And I take my guitar out of the case, and I don't even have to tune it. And I use them happily to this day. No matter what I do, those strings are always there for me.